So the state of Tennessee passed a law which flips a huge middle finger to the ATF and the NFA and removes state regulation of SBRs and short barreled shotguns. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the NFA needs to be repealed, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Excess Sites. For more than 25 years, the Excess team has created some of the most innovative sites on the market today for pistols, rifles, and also for shotguns. Whether used for personal defense or for hunting, these sites are designed and built to be the absolute best for their specific purpose. I purchase and put excess sights on many of my handguns. For example, I recently uh, purchased with my own money um, some uh, sights for my Glock 43 that I purchased off roster here in California. So I put these on a ton of my handguns. I use them on my own. I trust them. I trust them with my life. And so if you guys are interested, I highly recommend you check them out. I will leave a link to them down in the detail section. And thank you again, Excess Sites, for sponsoring this video. So like I said in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how a pro Second Amendment law was passed in the state of Tennessee and went into effect in July. This law makes SBRs and short barreled shotguns and short barreled rifles illegal to possess, manufacture, sell, and transport in the state at a state level. And it removes the state law enforcement ability to prosecute anyone for having these SBRs. This law aims to do something similar to what the state of Texas did with their whole suppressor freedom law. If you're not familiar, Texas and other states have passed laws like this one in the past, which allow residents of their own state to own and possess suppressors without going through all the federal restrictions and essentially removes the state's prosecution ability, uh, the criminal aspect of possessing those without actually adhering to federal guidelines. This Tennessee law does something similar, but instead it targets SBRs and also short barreled shotguns. The bill itself that passed is really short. Essentially, it states that Tennessee Code Annotated Section 39-17-1302 is amended by deleting subdivisions A4 in its entirety. Then it simply states that the act will take effect on July 1st of 2022. So when you look at the Tennessee Code, you have to look at what aspect of that code was deleted by this bill. Well, under Tennessee Code Section 39-17-1302, A4, it states before this bill was put into effect, that a person commits an offense if they intentionally or knowingly possess, manufacture, transport, repair, or sell a short barreled rifle or shotgun. So that section of the code references that it's a criminal offense under state law to possess, sell, or transfer SBRs or SBSs within Tennessee. However, the Tennessee code then in that same section goes on to talk about defenses of that criminal prosecution, that someone can have an affirmative defense if they are actually adhering to federal guidelines, i.e. that they applied to have an SBR under the NFA. There is an exemption portion of the code that says a person who acquires and possesses an SBR and SBS in full compliance with the requirements of the NFA, then that's legal and the person has the affirmative defense to say they can actually have this item without being prosecuted at a state level. This law, however, in the passing of SB 2628, completely deleted section A4 from the Tennessee law. That means the entire state crime of possessing, manufacturing, transporting, repairing, or selling an SBR or short barreled shotgun was therefore removed from the Tennessee code. However, as most of you are aware, the NFA makes possession of an SBR or an SBS illegal and legal only if you actually register them with the federal government and also pay that $200 tax stamp. This Tennessee bill, however, seeks to circumvent that entire requirement for its specific residents by almost saying that the state of Tennessee will not go after people at a state level if they possess these types of items. The goal of this bill seems to do something similar like I mentioned that other states have done like Texas with their suppressor freedom law. Many of these states are essentially saying and taking the position that at a state level, they will take no action against their residents despite there being a federal law that bars this type of conduct. But that's kind of where the issue really is. The state may not take action against their residents under this bill and under this law, but the federal government, the DOJ, and the ATF will still come after you and also apply the interface restrictions against you if you're found in possession of these items. It's important to note with all these types of state laws that are getting passed, that the ATF has taken the position that despite these state actions, they will still prosecute state residents under federal law, and you are still subject to those federal laws. As we saw in Texas after they passed the suppressor freedom law, the ATF sent out a letter to all gun stores and residents, essentially warning them that the ATF will still go after people who tried to get these made in Texas suppressors. There will no doubt be some sort of similar action by the ATF if they found out that SBRs and SBSs are being purchased, sold, 
possessed, transferred, whatever, outside of the NFA's restrictions within Tennessee, because there is still that overarching federal law. The state is saying that they are removing their aspect of it, that they will not go after people for this, but there is still that risk of the federal law. Now, this law went into effect on July 1st of this year, but I haven't heard any news right now of the ATF sending out letters like they did in Texas or even litigating any cases, filing a case against the state of Tennessee and this Tennessee state law. I haven't seen anything pop up right now, but that doesn't mean that the ATF will take no action. Right now, the ATF is litigating a million other cases. They are being sued on all fronts. They're litigating the whole frames and receivers stuff on a million different levels. They are going to have to litigate the whole pistol brace thing really soon, probably after December. They are litigating the whole force reset trigger stuff, uh, the made on your own suppressor stuff. So they are doing a ton of stuff right now. They are litigating a ton of cases and maybe this is just something that's on the back burner for them. With all this, I wanna voice my caution for those gun owners in Tennessee, similar to what I have done for those people with the whole Texas suppressor freedom law. Just because this becomes state law does not mean I would recommend you start making SBRs or SBSs outside of the NFA's restrictions. Understand, like I said before, we know that the ATF has taken the position and will continue to take the possession that these firearms will be in violation of the NFA and they will prosecute you under federal law. So if it were me, I would not jump into this whole thing thinking that now it's okay to do whatever you want with SBRs and SBSs within the state of Tennessee. I would treat this Tennessee SBR law as simply something symbolic, a law that is passed uh, essentially saying that if there is some sort of litigation against the ATF, against the NFA, and the NFA is removed or some of the ATF's powers are restricted, maybe then the state law will gain a little bit more teeth. But right now, I would not just simply do whatever you want. But regardless, I still think this is an interesting attempt by a state to essentially flip the bird to the ATF and the NFA and say that we all know that this federal law, what the ATF is doing, what the NFA is doing is unconstitutional and that states are going to step up and try to get around this stuff. So I just wanted to talk about this again because a ton of people have been asking me about what's going on with the Tennessee SBR law that went into effect in July. Like I said, I think it's something symbolic. I think it's a step in the right direction, but there is still that heavy, heavy risk of federal law being in place, the NFA is still in place, and the ATF will take action against people in any state who do not adhere to the NFA, uh, the restrictions on the NFA, the registration and taxation aspects. They will still go after you. Like they indicated in Texas, they're gonna go after people in Texas for the whole suppressor freedom law if they try to do something in compliance with the Texas freedom law. And they will also likely go after anybody in Tennessee who tries to circumvent the whole SBR aspect of the NFA. So that's currently where the Tennessee SBR law stands. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, make this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget to share with Built Barm Scholars and this nation will be maintained Barm Scholars.